have uh, Sven Gates from uh, uh, Atos in Belgium, Judy Chokros from uh, Cambridge in the UK, and Simon Overture from Paderborn. Uh, the three of them will lead you through uh, the case. Uh, you've received all the information on the background and on the publications already. So uh, this is the moment to go a bit deeper than what has been published before. So I leave the floor to our speakers. Hello everyone and uh, welcome uh, to the webinar from Cambridge. So whilst we are normally in three separate locations uh, today, we are together because it's actually the start of our 11th programme. And while the guys and gals on the course are busy doing a simulation, uh, we're here uh, talking to you. So in a nutshell, Goal for Experts is an accelerator programme to create technology leaders in ATOS. And the, the reason why it's so important is because ATOS senior management believe that technical leaders are and will continue to be a real major differentiator in the digital services sector. So this program started five years ago. It has run 10 times and 300 delegates have attended. Also included in the program are real projects and we have done 60 projects in teams of five and all the project ideas originate from the delegates. There are three partners in the program, Atos, the, the program client, who are a global digital services provider who have their headquarters uh, in Paris, in France. The Institute of Manufacturer, we are the lead supplier of the professional development services, uh, also a specialist in uh, technology management. And we are based in the Department of Engineering at Cambridge University. And last but not least, we have Paderborn University um, in Germany. So I'm now going to hand you over to Sven, who's going to talk about ATOS. So Atos is a global leader in digital transformation. We are the European number one in cloud, cybersecurity, high-performance computing. Overall, we provide end-to-end -end solutions through our digital transformation factory. And as an organization, we work in consulting, systems integrations, IT infrastructure, and payments services as well. In addition to all these services, we design and manufacture hardware ranging from servers to HPCs and fully secured smartphones. So back to me, yeah, and the Institute for Manufacturing. Three things make the Institute for Manufacturing at the University of Cambridge distinct. So firstly, we have a focus on manufacturing and technology-based industry. We are interdisciplinary, researching technology, management and policy topics. And we work very closely with industry, governments and, and other universities. Finally, we're really practice orientated. So we disseminated our research via um, our own embedded company, which is the Institute for Manufacturing IFM Education and Consultancy Services. Now I hand you over to Simon to talk about uh, Paderborn University. Yeah, <clears throat> the program is located at the Software Innovation Campus Paderborn, which is a cooperation between the university and different companies. We are having, for example, an incubator, a combined office space, history over 25 years with others together to bring out innovation with software. So, um, having introduced the partners, let's go back very to the very beginning, which was back in 2012. Um, when Atos originally contacted us about the program, some of the three reasons why they particularly wanted a program, the results that they wanted, was to attract and retain excellent technical talent in something in a very uh, competitive market to enable these technology talents to work effectively with customers, to be trusted advisors, and to create a real career path for technical leaders to complement uh, an existing path that they had for their business leaders. 
So to do that, uh, we had to, wanted to create a program and the three key challenges for this program were developing technically orientated people, keeping aligned with Atos in its uh, changing business structure and strategy, and keeping relevant and, and up to date in the fast changing and complex digital world. How did we do this? Well, there's no real big secrets here. It was the combination of an enthusiastic, determined, collaborative team, lots of time together, working on understanding each other's requirements, our strengths, what we could offer, how those could all complement and work together. We dil diligently applied Kirkpatrick principles and the Kirkpatrick process. Plus, there was uh, plenty of coffee, chocolate, and, and maybe the odd glass of wine and a meal or two. As part of this process, we developed a single sentence that describes what ASOS wants the results of the program to be. And it's really important that every part of the program has to contribute to this. So, Moving on, that one sentence, whilst it abstracts you know, why we wanted the programme, we had to be able to provide a more detailed explanation, particularly for the delegates, and to also to expand on, on what that sort of meant. We came up with uh, four different descriptions of the journeys. Um, you can see them here from a focused expert to an expert with strategic end-to-end -end view being local, from being local to being a networked influencer, from being a technology expert to a technology entrepreneur, and finally from being a problem solver to a trusted advisor, people who could work with clients. So the programme is structured in three one-week residential modules spread over approximately a six-month time frame. Each module has a different theme. So the first one is the future. This is what we're running now, the future world, future Atos, future you. The second module, which is in Paderborn, looks at technology and end-to-end -end perspectives. And the final module, Impact, that's back here in Cambridge, and that looks at delivering value and making things happen. I'm now gonna show you a video. Experts is a talent development programme implemented throughout ATOS worldwide that focuses on developing people with a passion for technology. Its goal is to broaden talent's expertise, encouraging them to step out of their technical comfort zones to see the big picture and enable them to contribute effectively at the intersection of technology and business. Together with the Universities of Cambridge and Paderborn, we have designed a six-month programme that includes three one-week residential modules and a strategic ATOS team project. Delegates learn by doing through simulations and applying new thinking, tools and approaches that integrate business and technology technology thinking with colleagues across all Atos businesses. This gives them the practical knowledge and confidence to apply their learning back in the business to become a trusted advisor who is sought after by customers to help them anticipate and navigate the challenges of tomorrow. This successful program has proven to build strong working relationships and networks and the team projects have delivered valuable outputs for the business. So we mentioned in the video about team projects and they're a key part of our history at the Institute of Manufacturing and we run these throughout um, the Atos programme. They're a great way for delegates to combine their business and technology thinking and throughout the programme we have a range of deliverables. So they have to first of all uh, deliver a negotiated project specification, agree throughout the, the team, in module two, they have to do a three minute, minute elevator pitch to the company uh, chief technology officers. They then have to do a technical feasibility study. And then finally, they do a business case presentation, uh, which is presented to really high executives within the company 
um, on the final Friday. The program has evolved over time and every program we've done has been different. These have been a result of feedback from delegates, but the more significant changes have been resulted from changes in ATOS or the digital world. We have both module reviews, which pick up um, obviously things that go on on every single module, but then we have one annual review where we take a real step back and ask the question, are we still delivering the right program and go right back to basics and, and look to how we should change the program and evolve it over the following year. Active learning is absolutely fundamental to our approach and each residential week incorporates a wide range of activities. We've actually got two different uh, simulations that involve working with Lego. Uh, these provide really memorable and fun lessons about understanding client requirements and providing attractive offerings. Each of our individual teaching sessions are designed and facilitated to engage every single delegate. Sometimes we use technology um, into doing real-time question answering, say via Klaxoon, for example. Sometimes we use traditional uh, discussion groups. So a key feature of this program is, is it helps people to develop new ways of thinking. And you only learn new ways of thinking by practicing them. Strategic approaches such as the IFM's road mapping that you can see here provide a really excellent way of helping delegates to think longer term from different perspectives, perspective, sorry, as well as consolidating and inter interlinking new knowledge. Now over to Sven, who will talk about the, the program impact in Atos. So the program has achieved some important tangible, but also intangible results for the organization. The participants themselves really value uh, the networks they develop across business plan, across organization. Generally, they know who to call if they have a problem. They bridge the gap between countries and different subsets of the organization. In general, they understand the organization a lot better after the program as well. Judith already mentioned some of the projects that we create. Each of the units has six projects. Over the course of the history of the program, we noticed that these projects all have an impact on the organization. Some become new portfolio items which are included to our customers, others enhance existing portfolio items. Some are helping support an organizational impact or support in making strategic decisions on working with different solutions and how to continue on the process. The overall program feed map um, is, is great reading for, for us as tutors. The delegates really appreciate that it's a dedicated program, really tuned to their needs as developing technology leaders. I'll just let you read uh, one of the particular comments that we, we like. And as you can see from the picture, we have some, some fun activities uh, during lunch breaks when we get people outside and this is um, croquet and there's been some very innovative ways of playing croquet over the different intakes. So we'd like to now invite you to, to ask any questions and, um, and hear more about the programme. Okay, so who starts first? I can share the presentation again, where we were. Okay, now you see the three people in, at least with the photograph, maybe this elicits some extra questions rather than anonymous voices. Maybe, maybe one question from my side, Andrea speaking, hello. Uh, really like that approach. One question, what were the 
criteria for your candidates and how was the nomination process? So was it self-nomination or they're nominated by their managers? How does that look like? Can you tell something about that? So this is Sven speaking. Um, the nomination is actually a structured approach within the Atlas organization. Uh, as part of our annual performance appraisal of all employees, we find some people who have particular requirements which they fit and are considered part of our target audience for programs like this. After we had that significantly large group actually in the organization, we start to whittle down that group based on internal criteria as in the job level, the type of job. Um, does it make sense for the person to, to be part? And that's a process which takes us from start to finish approximately nine months to get uh, to the 60 candidates that we have at the end, but there are decision levels for each GBU, so global business unit, um, but also on the divisional heads uh, to allow or, or stop the process for certain uh, participants. The last two, two stages are actually uh, the final interview, uh, the interview with our uh, HR representative for that person and then the final interview with myself. So people are selected based on past performance, uh, technical background, technical skill, technical ability, and their type of job, uh, but also on the interviews with HR and myself as program director. Does that clarify? Yeah, thank you very much. Can we, can we just add that uh, Sven and the Atos team do a fantastic job because the, the delegates from here are, are really enthusiastic and engaged throughout the program. Well, I think especially it's also important that in this phase also the, the, the expectations are managed, which is quite important so that the uh, people coming here having the right impression of the program, expecting the right things to get into learning. Okay, thank you. Next question. There was one in the chat box. Yeah, we have some questions in the chat box. Yeah. So, about the impact. Yeah. So, the question is uh, in presentation, 31% constitute organizational impact. So, the, the metrics of measuring the projects is. Um, what we did was we reviewed all the projects, what happened with the projects and where they were implemented or impacted the organization. And 31% of the projects impacted in such a way that they supported organizational change or organizational uh, process change initiatives. So it's a calculation generally. So, Celine, does this answer your question or do you have any add-on questions on that? Um, yes, this is Celine speaking. So, when you mentioned that it supports organizational change or initiatives, these are kind of qualitative measurements. Then, how, how do you kind of quantify such a qualitative uh, benchmark? Well... I might be misunderstanding your question, too, so I apologize in advance. What we're, we're, what we're actually calculating is if the projects contributed to the change in any way. So sometimes the, proce the, the, the projects uh, provide a change in process and to see if that process has been included. It doesn't really measure how big the change was that the, processing, uh, that the project impacted. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, all these measurements or impact metrics is kind of like a checkbox where you say that, okay, if it does impact the organizational initiative, it's kind of a check and says that, okay, this is one impact that we measure. Well, yes, that's, that's one impact that we measure and we also see, for example, if it impacts some of the products that we deliver, things like that. Okay, understood. Thank you. Welcome. And there was a question from Sally uh, about uh, activities taking place outside of the weeks. So in between uh, the programs, uh, other than project work. So it's related to the project work. So we have, uh, we have had 
um, webinars uh, in terms of related to a particular task that they've needed to do on the project work. We've had team calls on that. But there's also some webinars related to some core content that you know pre there are pre one to two weeks prior to particular modules um apart from that delegates have to do you know their own study their own application develop knowledge in in, in certain areas so Andrew, did you want to well yes it's it's generally e uh, a lot of e-learnings which we provide in between the sessions there's some project work and post project one of the changes that we implemented for this year and we're starting this year is that people will be invited for uh, a return day between nine and 12 months after the program has finished to follow up on their progress and to make sure that the impact for the people was uh, as expected to further guide people afterwards. So Sally, uh, does this answer your question or do you have any uh, follow on questions on this? Ah, the virtual content. So I think this is this online or, or e-learning you refer to, Simon. <laughs> um, so we have access to the entire database as Atlas as an organization have access to, and we work with several content providers. So depending on uh, the type of content we're looking into, we have specific um, well, content provided to the organization. So it depends on, for example, sometimes we use Harvard Learning, otherwise we cross, cross knowledge. Depending on the type of content and the type of activity that we need, we use the specific one. So there's not a lot of absolutely, you must do this, this and this. There is um, understand your personal development needs and go and find things that can help you support you, support your understanding to deliver the objectives of the program. And also the simulations you saw from uh, the module weeks, which is very practical, we try to involve this in the project. So the projects are the framework for the learning experience in between. We have there are different deliverables like uh, a definition of the project. They are encouraged to uh, apply things they learned during the course. Uh, for their pro projects and uh, this is mainly also self-learning and uh, applying the things to these kind of projects and we have uh, regular meetings with them in between to see the progress and, and to give them hints where to look and where going deeper. Okay. Ah, so this is the extension to uh, interactive parts, so uh, mentors, other people intervening. Uh. So, yes. Um, so during the project, we have uh, the tutor team, which is involved. Dur during the program, we have the tutor team from Cambridge, Paderborn, but also Atos tutors who are assigned uh, to support the projects as a whole. Um, the individual participants, are invited, but it's on a voluntary basis, uh, to join uh, our internal mentoring activity um, where we assign people mentors, but they have to choose to be part of it. Is that? Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else with a question? Hello, here is Christian. Uh, I have also some questions. Um, the um, program for 2019, has it already been started or when will it start or is the uh, application already possible or has this just finished? So application is, as I prefer, pre explained earlier, is um, nomination by the organization itself and the 2019 project has started we actually are running the first intake this week 
and the second intake of the year will start in uh, 2019. Generally, we start our uh, application process or nomination process around the June period, and we finish our selection by uh, the end of November in order to be able to start and prepare for the start at the beginning of the year. Okay, thank you. Next. I would like to chip in with one. <clears throat> if you see the cooperation between uh, Cambridge and Paderborn, what were the advantages of working in, uh, uh, with a duo of suppliers? So this is basically a question of not only to Atos, but also to the two partners involved. Uh, so what were the advantages and what are uh, complementarities between the two, but also what are potential uh, challenges where you had to align or realign? So the... The main rationale for you know why we work together is linked to historical reasons because there is a long 25, 30 year research cooperation between Atos and Paderborn University. So that was the, the major reason why Atos wanted us to, to work together because uh, Paderborn been doing research with Atos uh, and previously Siemens Information Systems for a long time and had that great understanding of the, of the technical requirements. There are always cha you know, challenges of, of bringing uh, two parties together, but we complement each other very well in terms that uh, we do technology management, we do a number of, of different topics that are, they are all very different to the topics that uh, Paderborn cover in, in the program, which is basically looking at the computer science. So, but there is also enough of a, an overlap that we can connect and, and interconnect the various topics that, that we do. So, it works well. We've uh, developed a relationship over the time. We, we know the journeys between Paderborn and Cambridge very well. And um, we've learned a lot from working with each other. The challenges also are because this program is, is meant for technology leaders. Um, the technology is changing very rapidly. So as we started five years ago, um, people know different topics than they know now. So we, especially uh, the technology part of the program uh, has to be tweaked uh, very closely with uh, things going on in reality and new technology introduced. And this is um, the thing we combine here very, very clever. And as from the other's point of view, um, I think one of the success factors of this program is that we have an equal partnership in the success of the program. There is no, well, there is obviously a client supplier relationship, but we treat the program generally as equals, and when decisions are need to be made for certain reasons, then we joined, uh, make the decisions and making sure that uh, we keep balance in the program and we keep working together in, in, in the right way. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? There is a new question from Celine yeah. in the chat. Yeah. So our program results taken into personal appraisal, uh, directly attributed to their promotion. So if you have these promotion statistics, how much are they linked to program results and do you have a role to play there? Well, um, that's two questions actually. The first question, are uh, are results of the program linked to personal promotions? Um, well, wait, personal appraisals? Uh, no. So the personal appraisals in the organization are linked to um, job performance, values, those kind of topics. 
the process the, the program is separate from that however as an organization and as a program director i do provide feedback back into the organization which is then uh, taken into account so is it directly linked no indirectly there is a communication ongoing obviously um, how much is the process of the the the, the, the promotions linked a promotion of a person is, is, is very difficult to actually pinpoint to one specific reason. It's a multitude of reasons, considering that we already select high performance in the program. Um, they are already visible by being selected to the program. All of these factors play uh, a certain role within the promotion themselves. So being part of it, we notice that a lot of them get new and additional promotions and different opportunities also because our internal mobility and our internal um, succession planning within the organization is focused very much also on, on giving priority to people who have been part of a program like this. Does that answer your question? And you're coming along. So how about contribution to projects? It is not considered during appraisal decisions. Um, for discussions, sorry. Mm -hmm. How about contribution? So the personal contribution of the projects to the people, uh, that's where my feedback to the people and to the organization comes into account. It is, there is a feedback ongoing. Um, if it's included in the, in, in, the, in the appraisal, it's up to the responsibility of the local HR responsible and the, the, the manager of the people. I myself have no impact on, on people appraisals. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you all uh, for joining and I want to thank Sven, Judith and Simon for their contribution.